I worked at 9 11. It was that my country was punched in the face and I wasn't happy about it. It was a sight that I never expected to see in my city. And I couldn't imagine, for the love of me, what possessed these people to do this. It was a life changing experience for me. All of a sudden, he says, uh, we just got a report that the Trade Center was hit. He turns on the television and he stayed on the air through the whole conflict. I looked over to see the two buildings burning. My mind was my family. Because my ex-wife and my brother-in-law and other friends were working down there. My brother-in-law worked down there. So I immediately tried to call, but again, antennas on top of the Trade Center didn't allow me to reach that. And I wound up on Route 3, where I'm looking at the towers burning and all of a sudden I watched them crumble. Right in front of Giant Stadium on Route 3, along the, there's a little bridge that, for the Patterson River, Passaic River, that you gotta go over. And uh, I looked at the Trade Center and watched them crumble. At that point, I says, I gotta get back to New York somehow. So I pulled out my ID, I put it on my dashboard, and I scurried back through the streets to get to the Bayonne Bridge. And when I got there, uh, listened to the radio again, I found out they closed all the bridges and tunnels coming in and out of New York. Anyway, so I packed up my work gear, my construction boots, my bandana, my hard hat, and my vest and off I went. I managed to park my vehicle in a safe sound area and you see nothing but a sea of people. From West Street to 12th, uh, nothing but a, heads, as far as you can see. And you had the Salvation Army there staged to give water and food for the masses of people. I. Uh, went into the building, I spoke with the people, uh, a soldier escorted me in, and as we were walking to the desk, the soldier was told, we're not accepting anybody else. Now the line that I was on, I was on for about an hour to get into the place, and then to hear that, and you're standing next to the soldier, and I pointed, that means me? He says, no. And he said to the soldier, he's the last one. And finding what curriculum I can be good at, they were basically looking for people to work torches, to cut beams. It took me four hours to go from 34th Street and 12th Avenue to 6th Avenue and 14th Street. Normally it's a 10 minute drive, four hours. And as you're walking, you're stepping on dust from Varick and Canal. And as you're going to the site, your feet are no longer trudging through dust. You feel like you're trudging through snow. It's now covered your boots. And you're still now trudging. And as you're walking, you see the trail that you made behind you of your footprints in the dust. It was deep. It was about almost a foot deep by the time I got to Stuyvesant High School. And as I'm walking there, again, it's now getting deeper. It's almost a foot and a half deep of dust that we're walking through. So we're trudging through that. Seeing the uh, debris of the tragedy, and I'm looking at fire trucks twisted like a child went berserk on my little Tonka truck. I'm looking at police cars squashed like pancakes. I'm looking at fire engines that are torched and just cinded. And it wasn't just you seen one, you seen dozens. So I yelled out to the chief, I says, uh, can I tag along? He says, yeah, why not? And all I needed was a glove. 
So I got myself a pair of gloves and a bottle of water and a flashlight. And I pursued into the building six. And going into building six, I uh, searched for them, the whole lower core of the trade center. At the last one, the grotto illuminates, revealing the cross. I was so overcome with the sight of the cross that it brought me to my knees in tears because I was taken by the whole experience, seeing the devastation of the Trade Center, going through the pilgrimage of going there, and uh, seeing my country attacked. I looked at this cross in, in summer and tears, I, I, it still gets me to this moment. It revitalized me. It allowed me to pursue and persevere. And I was overcome by what I had seen. And uh, we couldn't see it at night. We were looking up, we were looking down. And as we were looking down, you know, you're looking at structures all over you. And you didn't take notice of it. But as you've seen it where it stood, as Barbara Walter says, it was one of the most beautiful sights I ever saw. And I do forgive, but I can't forget. And I will never forget 9-11.